he needs, you know, karma is not going to take care of it, and he needs to take an active role in punishing these people. I was asking, uh, I missed the initial part of the interview. Uh, about, what about the timeline of his symptoms? When did he start getting depressed? Was it after he lost his job? Or what? Um, I couldn't really get at that. Uh, he initially said he wasn't that down. Um, it was, it's been a while. It was around the time of his job. I couldn't get before or after. That's where, that's where, but it was a little vague. Um, you know, if I heard the thing about the, the if I heard the thing about the monitor correctly, uh, I definitely would have asked about, uh, his work history more. Mm -hmm. Um, just as you've been able to have uh, a job for a significant period of time. Could, could you get at the safety plan more in, in this realm here? So I, I think for, for me just talking with him is, you know, okay, if you ever got to the point of, you know, you felt like that you needed to do something to yourself or to someone else, you know, what would you do? Who would you turn to? How how would you avoid that? Just saying, you know, recognizing these are dangerous situations. And so tell me what you would do to keep from doing that. Um, so most of that plan has to come from that person and it has to be something that they're willing to do. You know, would you, you know, if the, if the parent situation was better or there was a you know, a sibling or spouse or someone that you could identify as a trusted person to them. Okay, could you could you call them? Would they be able um, and reliable to be someone to talk to or be involved with you? Um, could you call, you know, me, the office here? But some sort of chain of command from if you found yourself in this place, okay, this is what this is who we want to contact, this is what we want to do. Um, just establishing, okay, Sure, you don't feel that way now. You feel like karma is going to get them. But if you ever got to that point, A, B, C. But what if he, he had a history of uh, no imprisonments, no fights, no access to weapons, no verbal threats to persons? Would, given what he said about, about the monitor and the, and the fact that, the, that he thinks people did him wrong, where? I, I suppose I'm, I'm concerned about when do you start when do you start talking about a safety plan for homicidal ideation? I mean, what, what, what if those factors were all negative? I, I think, you know, for this guy, you say it just because of the comments that he made. Um, you know, if he had said, yeah, I lost my job, but the economy's tough and it's happening to everyone, then there's probably not a need to go much further down that road. But given the com the paranoid comments that he made about them, we don't know how psychotic he is, how much that paranoia is driving. And given the fact that he had some not so kind say things to say about these people and said, you know, they're going to get it. They're, it's going to ha happen to them. Um, he didn't say that it was going to come at his hands well, okay. and I asked him specifically about right. it. Right. Yeah, he did. He yeah, he did ask very specifically. You know, are are you going to be the one to do that? Um, when I think that was fine. You know, then and once he established that, he moved on. And I think it's going to come down to the individual interviewer as to whether or not they're going to be okay with you stopping there, or they're going to want you to go a little further. The fact that he had uh, was able to pack away two whiskey sours and three reds. Would you consider a substance abuse a risk factor for his violence? Absolutely. And, and I think, um, you know, talking about the, the risk factor, I, I, I would have given him at least moderate because he's single, he's male. I mean, there, there are a lot, uh, un, recently unemployed, there are a lot of things that are, are making him, his risk go up. So, and but there's a lot of, the other thing I always think about, there's a lot of people out there, you know, just like him, and these are still, thankfully, much rarer events than suicide. Right. Um, right. And, and, and again, it, you know, we're, I, I, I'm not saying that you have to say, well, th this guy is going to go out and shoot someone, but you have to show them, I'm thinking, I'm at least thinking about this. This is going through my head. I'm showing you that I have thought about this. Because if, if you don't talk about it, if you don't demonstrate that, they don't know if you've considered it or not. I, I thought he, he had a 
lot of like uh, underlying hostility, anger, mm -hmm. and sometimes people are afraid of their own anger. So if somebody asks them to bring it out. So I think the Dr. Burton said he asked him directly. But I, I was concerned, like he fits that uh, he's alone, just like you said, all those factors. He's um, he likes to stay alone, not social interactions. Um, he was just thrown out of his job. So all those things. He would have. He was. Yeah. He was. He lost his job uh, three or four months ago, and you know, I try to get at it whether how much he's fantasizing or anything like that about going back there and showing them what what for. And he he denied all that. And you know, it's uh, it's challenging as far as if he actually did have any homicidal ideation. I don't think there really is a safety plan <laughs> uh, for that, other than honestly, uh, you hospitalize and then. Uh, Con, con, probably contact those individuals. So um, safety plans are really important, um, and sometimes the residents I've noticed don't do that. And I've wondered if that's partly because uh, we do our interviews on the inpatient unit, and so they're sort of like thinking they're safe. So maybe if we did it not on the unit, but it's it's I've done that with every interview, and really you need to do that. Um, so it doesn't have to be extensive, you know, to say, oh, I, you know, contract with law, you know, just, just, just that, that you've looked into it. Yes? What about these folks who say, who give a contingency to their plans, like, oh, you know, if I met him on a dark alley, no, 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 I'm not going to hurt him, but if I met him on a dark alley, you know, then is, at what point in, in an exam <laughs> should you just go ahead and default over to something like pulling out the commitment papers? Or, or, or would you, would there be a risk you'd be a, too ready to pull out the commitment papers. I mean, you can commit somebody, but uh, you know, you can commit them. I get you can commit him, I believe, but he'll be out in, you know, three days. <laughs> <laughs> three days, um, unless he does something exactly on the unit that would have people concerned. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what. You know, I mean, as a, personally, then you've lost the treatment alliance.